When I was a teenager, my little sister Nelly was very young and wasn't in school yet. Try to describe a story on a sheet of paper. She wrote me this letter and gave it to me. How cute. <laughs> At this time, she didn't know how to read or write, but she knew exactly what this waves and skibble meant. I distinctly remember this event because it was my first time when I became interested in how the brain works. This three pound lump of gelatin is actually a miraculous thing made up of millions of neurons and the bill of, in, of inner connection between them that defines who we are, allow us to think, learn, and dream, and actually makes the brain the ultimate adaptive mechanism. As an organ, your brain only needs sugar, oxygen, and sleep. But at the same time, it's always thirsty for learning new stuff, especially during the young ages. In our lab in University of Louisiana, we're trying to understand the brain and the, and the process of thought in order to extend its functionality beyond the human body. So we're trying to understand the brain and the power of thought to build a better brain-computer interface, or BCI, chips. This chip actually capturing the signaling phenomena of the neuron via electrical sensors and try to translate them into commands to control an external device or a computer so it can allow the user to manage, control, or monitor a device or any other external ways. The main power of the brain is not only the power of thinking, but actually the power to adapt. And the brain can adapt on three different levels, chemical, structural, or functional. For example, remember the first time you tried to learn how to ride a bike? In the beginning, you felt uncomfortable and unnatural. You were very ex exhausted, and actually your parents were exhausted because they had to try somehow to keep you from killing yourself. But after a while, you started to get it. You were doing it. And actually, that feeling that you felt right before you crashed happened because your brain was, post was boosting some chemicals to a specific group of neurons to try to enhance you with a new learning task. Two days later, you get ready to ride the bike, but hold on, you feel some, something is wrong. You are unable to perform as well as you did two days ago. You wonder what happened. Actually, that chemicals that allow you to perform well fades within a short period of time. You worry that you will have to learn the whole process all over again, but your muscle and nervous system still remember some of the learning skills that you learned two days ago. And if you repeat the process again and again, your brain will start to alter the structure to so a process called neural plasticity. In addition of generation of endorphin and other hormones that comes as a reward for your brain, it makes your brain change its structure to help you with a new adaptive task. You keep finally keep riding over and over. And if you ride for a decent amount of time, your brain will start to dedicate specific neurons for the new learning task. So overall, so learning a bike, your brain makes chemical, structural, and functional adjustment till this new learner task as well, just like riding a bike. It's solid pavement, <laughs> and you will never forget it. As a matter of fact, experiments have shown that you need to practice the skill at least three years till your brain makes it permanent for the rest of your life. The cells of the brain or neurons are very primitive. They are responsible for everything that we do, think, or dream. But at the same time, they are very simple, and their function is very limited. But their power comes from their huge number and the billions of interconnections between them. And the neurons are connected in a group-like formation. Every group is responsible for specific task or specific action. And they communicate together by sending messages like electrical sig signals. We can visualize these electrical signals like fireworks across the brain. Every firework shape, location, and time is responsible for specific tasks and specific action. 
it's happening all the time. Even it's happening right now while you're listening to this talk. And the good thing is that we can capture the echo of these firewalls with tool in order to understand how the brain represents the surrounding world. And these firewalls actually represent everything that we know, every single piece of information we have studied, learned, listened to, all our perspectives, dreams, memories, which actually map the whole universe inside your brain. And in our lab in the University of Louisiana here, we're trying to develop new techniques to understand the brain and capture these firewalls. And the best tool and the most popular and safest one is the EEG. Like the heart EKG, but for the brain. The first EEG was recorded in 1924 from, the human, from a live human brain, and it was by Dr. Hans Berger Lab in Germany. By the way, this was his Christmas card for that year. I wonder if this guy knew my little sister. <laughs> so yes. A single firewall can tell us a lot about how the brain functions. And few firewalls, especially in the summer night sky, is beautiful. But imagine if all the firewall clocks were to fire at the same time. Not cool. And this is what actually happened whenever a person gets a seizure. It was called fainting and falling sickness during the 17th century, when seizure was considered to be a madness or Possession. But actually, this is what happens in the brain waves whenever a person gets a seizure. And this is how the transition sound, if you converted the brain signal into sound wave. This is the normal one. Seizure can happen to anybody. And unfortunately, till now, the cause of seizure remains unknown. Has anybody here ever experienced deja vu, you know, when you, it seems that you are reliving the same moment again? Actually, what you're experiencing is a magnitude form of a micro-seizure. On a more serious level, people can suffer from epilepsy. Epilepsy is a repeated seizure syndrome and can take a variety of shapes and forms, but in all the cases, the blast of firework-like messages actually impairs the person. Epilepsy affects more than 10% of a human popula population worldwide. And 95% happens in the developing world, especially in seniors over 80. And in the last year only, it resulted in more than 100,000 sudden expected deaths, especially on the road, when more than 64%, 64% of the auto fatal accident is caused by seizure and the real reach of seizure is much greater than officially documented because not all seizure can be detected for cases and not all seizure cases shows jerking movement of the body additionally seizure can happen in infants and patient in coma when the victim cannot explain what's happening or no body movement will observe at all But the good news is the only entity that can truly show what's happening in the brain is the EEG. And in our labs were trying to detect new techniques to understand what the brain experiences. So several years ago, we started our research lab and actually we started it with this experiment. When we tried to use a commercial headset to start to play with the brain waves and we developed some interface code. So in the beginning, it gets you the base signals and the base line to read the information. Then you try to remove the facial expression because they can become like a noise or called BCI artifacts from the brain signals after a while. <laughs> yes. And after that, the main experience happened when my colleague was asked to perform this hidden commands on these cards by only thinking about the movement. So he had this virtual box on the interface and he tried to push it forward by only thinking about the action. The other example here, he tried to make a pull command, 
Jesus actually pulls the bar by only using his power to sow. And the third example, he just was trying to visualize the rotation movement and perform it on the PC. He really felt like a wizard at that moment. <laughs> and he was very happy, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Red. And the main power here comes that we can actually explain any function that we need by using a new way of communicating of it. So other than controlling artificial limbs, we can actually try to cause new disease and so on by using the brain-computer interface. Or even, as my professor dreams, it can improve dating apps. <laughs> I mean, literally, think about it. If you can literally read her mind, it's cool. <laughs> so, if it's just simple, why you are not supporting BCI application today? Not because they are not that fashionable, but apparently it's exactly like the brain. It's not that simple. The brain or the BCI chip that we try to generate or build actually was built to try to capture the electrical signal of the brain, adapt to the brain, and then translate them into future commands or so on. All try to get, get them and try to predict them in the future. And the main challenge here is how to build a lightweight logic that's smart enough to adapt to individual users. For example here, if you know that all of us share the same brain material, but everyone fireworks are different. So we had to come up with a new algorithm that can mimic the same idea of the body immunity system of detecting viruses. So we generate a new algorithm, simplified mathematics, that not only can detect abnormalities in the system, but also predict them in the future. So we designed them on a small chip here, and we saw that's it, done. But actually, this is when the interesting stuff started to happen. Apparently, the chip was in big trouble. The brain started to consider the chip as an added peripheral to the body. And the brain started to adapt itself to the chip. Actually, the, chip, the brain started to generate specific tailored commands and patterns to manipulate with the chip. Amazing. The student relationship turned upside down because just for one moment to forget that we're dealing with the ultimate adaptive mechanism. Working in a field where you try to stay ahead of the brain is difficult because the brain is learning everything faster than you are. We have a long way to go till we fully understand the brain, if it will be ever possible. But technology exists that can aid us in this process, so capturing the electrical signal of the brain and more importantly, by capturing the abnormality of the system. And if we do that, we can start to understand the chemical structure and function causes of mental disabilities, uh, learning disabilities, adapt depression even, even obesity. And if we do so, we actually can free the world from a lot of pain and suffering. At the end, my goal is to understand the brain, and the rest is just some code. Thank you. <laughs>